ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies, Robert Buckins and Stephanie Mills. Where? Where's the love? Now, if, you, if you've never heard this version of Where is the Love, you need to go check it out. Robert Bookins and Stephanie Mills. Where is the love? All right. We're going to take Stephanie and Robert. Now, I tell you, I haven't heard this song in about a year and a half. This is the song that was playing on my radio when I got the news that my best friend had died. And so it has that special meaning to me because it takes me back to that moment. Not a bad moment now. It used to be a horrible moment, but it's not a bad moment now. It is a nostalgia moment. So, Stephanie Mills and Robert Bookins. Ladies and gentlemen, I received... Um, and I'm only going to talk about this only for a brief second. I received an email from a person earlier today talking about how he had been scammed by so many people and he'd taken all of these courses with other people and he talked about all of these other people who claim to be gurus on the internet circuit. Okay. What the that got to do with me? Then he talks about Jehovah's Witnesses being a cult. <laughs> what the? Who in the world told you you get to contact me through my email saying stupid things like that? I'm sorry. That's when I want to say, nigga, I didn't contact you talking about you or your mama. But I, I can't do that. You see, I can't get attitude. But the fact is, I didn't contact him. I didn't ask him to contact me. I don't know who this idiot is. And yes, he's an idiot if he thinks that it's okay to contact me when I have the comments turned off in the first place. Ladies and gentlemen, let me digress. The comments are not on on any of my videos because as I told you, people can't stick to the subject. I didn't ask him for his opinion. But that's how he communicates with me. Now, pay attention. That's his first communication with me, according to him. First communication, and that's how he communicates with me. So I took off a piece of excrement, and I communicated back with him. Well, because that's what I thought his comment was full of. Now... Let me see if I can express this. Let's do this real quick. Like I said, you see, I have to take a breath. Because I'm not, it's not that I'm pissed off. Now pay attention. I, you know, Tyrone uh, Phillips, that's the young man's name. Tyrone Phillips ended up being a quadriplegic after a car accident. But Tyrone Phillips is the one who introduced the word pissed off to me. And he used to say it's better to be pissed off than to be pissed on. And, man, he was right. Well, hold on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not pissed off. The individual, obviously, was trying to get a rise out of me. He needed a response. So I was actually thinking, should I do that video talking about him? Because he got to think that he's a superstar. That's why I'm not referencing who he is. It's not, it's not the first time somebody's done that. But let's do something. Watch this. We're going to use Bard for a second. Bard, wake up. Wake up. Could you please provide the definition for cult? The root word for occult? The root Stop listening.
I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have to turn off my young lady because I need to be able to focus. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, let's let him explain it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> let me tell you guys, if I've looked this up, it was when I was around 15. I've not looked this word up since around the age of 15 because there's no need. But there you go. While cult can be seen as the root word for occult, it's not in the way you might think. They share a common ancestor but evolved along different paths. Cult, derived from the Latin word colier, meaning to cultivate, worship, honor. Originally referred to any system of religious worship or veneration, particularly a branch within a larger religion. Over time, develop. Wait a minute, you mean a cult could be any religion? Hmm. That deals with worship and honor. Hey guys, that's text Mason. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Tex Mason calling. It's been uh, over an hour since uh, I put you guys on pause because we had some things to go over. Tex Mason of the THC Trust, THC.com, I believe it is. Ladies and gentlemen, out of all the researchers out there and the people who literally study law, study statutes, and so forth, Tex Mason and uh, his ability to hold information, retain information, figure out strategies, Tex Mason. All right, let's get back to this cult thing. As we mentioned, cultivators, worshipers, and honorarios. Pay attention. Originally referred to as a system of religious worship, originally or veneration, particularly a branch within a larger religion. So, originally, since Catholicism claims to be the original Christian so-called organization, all those little splintering branches were called cults. Hold on now. Let's talk about it now. Developed a negative connotation, often associated with groups with unorthodox beliefs and practices, led by charismatic leaders, and potentially harmful to members. Now here's the thing. We have the moron in India who took two bombs, planted them in, in a convention center where Jehovah's Witnesses were scheduled to have a convention. He waited till Sunday morning. Why Sunday morning? Sunday mornings, when it comes to conventions of Jehovah's Witnesses, is the convention where it's more populated. There are more people at the Sunday mornings of conventions for Jehovah's Witnesses than Saturday, or if it's a three-day convention, Fridays. That's why he did Sunday, because he wanted more people there. This gentleman had become one of Jehovah's Witnesses after going through the studying course and making sure he understood the basics of the scripture. See, Jehovah's Witnesses, you can't just become a Jehovah's Witness. Like some church, you just be there for a couple of weeks and you say, I want to get baptized, and they have baptismal days, and you go get baptized, and you become a member. No, sorry. Jehovah's Witnesses, you have to know at least the basics, the basics of scriptural so-called doctrine. No, in other words, how did man get here? Who's the creator of mankind? What's the theme of the Bible? What's the requirement of all Christians on the planet? Who is Jesus Christ? You need to know those things. Now, I know most of you say, I already know that stuff. No, you don't. Because it's not what you think. It's according to what the Bible says. And they need to be able to, through their studying, because they have Bible studies, through their studying, how to find it in Scripture. That's why when you talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, they pretty much all say the same thing because they go through the same training. Now, people say, that's indoctrination. No, it isn't because you're using the scriptures to explain the scriptures. There's a lot of studying that goes on. Like I said, Tex Mason, when it comes to law and all that, man, knock yourselves out. Jehovah's Witnesses, when it comes to the Bible, you better believe it. All right, let's continue. A cult comes from the Latin word occultus, meaning hidden, secret, concealed. 
initially referred to knowledge or practices beyond the mainstream or widely accessible, often related to magic, mysticism, or the supernatural. Magic, mysticism, or supernatural, Deuteronomy, <laughs> the 18th chapter, verse 10 through 12, will let you know that Jehovah's Witnesses don't play that. Magic, mysticism, or supernatural, or some type of hidden knowledge. Okay, but let's go on. Since the individual says that Jehovah's Witnesses are supposed to be a cult, since the idiot, and I can call him that now, got that information through what he heard somebody else say, not information that he has observed himself personally, attributing all these things to them. Hold on. While still retaining its connotation of the hidden or mysterious, a cult can have neutral or even positive associations for those interested in alternative spiritualities or esoteric traditions. So, while they share a linguistic ancestry, cult and occult diverged in both meaning and usage. It's important to use them carefully to avoid any unintended connotations. Ladies and gentlemen, they both come from the same word. One is the root of the other. Just that simple doesn't matter the connotation the connotation is always it's foreign it's frowned against and it's dangerous so when they associate that with jehovah's witnesses one of the most peaceful organizations on the planet yeah it's offensive now again the individual in india heard those very same things those very same type of rumors and guess what he decided to do sorry let's clear up the desktop Okay, guess what he decided to do? He decided that he was going to prove this. He felt that Jehovah's Witnesses, not only do they brainwash their children, but what they talk about in the congregation, which is scripture, you guys can see the congregation meetings online, but what they talk about is, pay attention, very important, dangerous. Same thing Russia is saying. Russia is saying that the information discussed, dangerous. So let me tell you what Jehovah's Witnesses discuss. Hold on. Give you all a, a little taste. Tasty, tasty, wasty, wasty. Then we're going to get rid of this video and then we're going to go into the next video. So we're going to do two videos today because there's some other information. This is the what's known as today's text. Text for Sunday, December 24, 2023. I am Jehovah, your God. You must have no other gods besides me. Then it says, every Christian who wants to become holy, because you must be holy as Jehovah your God is holy, is what the scriptures say, must ensure that nothing or no one comes between him and his relationship with his God. And because we bear the name Jehovah's Witnesses, we are determined to avoid any action that would disgrace or profane that holy name. Or allowing individuals, other individuals, to disgrace or profane that holy name. For the Israelites, recognizing Jehovah as their God involved keeping his laws, Leviticus. You should carry out my judicial decisions and you should keep my statutes and walk in them. I am Jehovah your God. It concludes with these words. Um, excuse me, it, it includes some words, uh, some of those statutes to Israel. So, anyway, for example, verses 5 through 8. 21 and 22 deals with animal sacrifices. Those were to be made in a way that would not profane the holy things of Jehovah. Reading these verses will move us to want to please Jehovah and to offer him acceptable sacrifices of praise, that is, the fruit of the lips, as Hebrews 13, 15 urges us to do. Now, wait, hold on. Let's go here. Because they say Jehovah's Witnesses are teaching harmful things in a congregation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the watchtower. The daily text is taken from a previous watchtower. The watchtower is the actual information that is being discussed. And in every Kingdom Hall, every weekend, they have what they refer to as the study edition. That's what we go over as a congregation. Wait, hold on. Let's go to the top. Study article 48. You must be holy. Isn't that exactly where we just read? Isn't that exactly the whole comment right there is from this paragraph here. Hebrews, it says acceptable sacrifices of praise. Watch Hebrews tell us about the fruitage of the lips. Hey, the fruits of our lips. Ain't that interesting? Now, how could I have known that? Imagine that. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who don't understand Jehovah's Witnesses, please understand. We study scripture. We abide by the scripture. We follow the scripture. We're not strict adherents to the scripture because there are certain things that the scriptures say that don't apply today. Why? Because Jesus says that the Mosaic law was fulfilled at his death. He fulfilled the law. Don't believe me? Go back and read. We're now under the Galatians. Tells us we're under the law of love. Just that simple. You must love your neighbor as yourself, and you must love your God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Okay? We're under the law of love. So, that Allowing people to email from time to time with questions, I don't mind that, ladies and gentlemen. What I do mind is that I told you, and he gets blocked. I will be going back and blocking him permanently from communicating via email. I will not observe anything. I've not been blocking people lately. Not been blocking anyone lately. But that one definitely gets blocked. Because I ain't got time for the stupidity. And here's the problem. The reason why it was stupid is because he never communicated with me before. He didn't know me from Tom, Dick, or Mary. But the first thing he wanted to do was criticize and contradict and challenge. I ain't got time for that. See, that's why I can't stand the non-YouTubers. What do you mean non-YouTubers? The ones who are not my people. Really? So non-YouTubers are not your people? You better believe it. See, my people on YouTube, my people on YouTube are my people. They know me. Well, so to speak. They know how to communicate with me. They know. They, they'll always say, I'm going to preface this because I don't want you to block me. They'll say things like that because they know that there's a possibility that they're going to say something wrong. And so they'll apologize at the very beginning. I hope this doesn't get me blocked. See, those are my people because they listen to what I have to say. But the morons, the idiots, the imbeciles, that's right. If those words offend you, then that means you have a problem. You are not one of my people. See, my people understand words are just words. But you know what my people also understand? That I am one of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. You don't come to my platform and talk about my God or the organization that he founded. Jehovah's Witnesses wasn't founded by no man. We don't follow no man. I will never, ever follow a man. Which is why when people talk about how they follow me on YouTube, you don't be following me. Come with me. Uh-uh, you don't be following me. Okay, I am not your leader. Jesus says we have one leader the Christ. So I am not your leader. You don't follow me. Now you can watch the videos, pay attention to them, get the information and run with it. Okay? As a matter of fact, that's what Tex Mason and I were talking about is some of the information we've been discussing lately. Because he doesn't get a chance to watch my videos because he's always researching. And so I pointed out a couple of things to him and that I told him he could add to his repertoire and he like, you know what? That's interesting. I'm going to take a look at that. You see, because he's a thinker, people, and sometimes us thinkers, it's hard to get us to see different points of view. I had this one guy tell me that he had a different way of looking at something, and he wanted to run it by me. <clears throat> so I told him, you know what, I'll take a look at that. I said, however, and I wrote him back and told him where the possible flaws were in his thinking. And then I showed him the law and the wording of the law. And he came back, I don't think you understand. And at that point, I stopped listening to him. Why? Because it wasn't, I don't think you understand. That's not the response. The response was, I just showed you the law that completely contradicts what you said. And then you come back with, I don't understand. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's being stuck in a mental concept, a mindset. And I understand that. I'm stubborn too. But I'm also able to go back and say, you know what? Man, I had that all wrong. Oh, mate, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Oh, maybe that could be. You know, there's a possibility. 
okay. Oh, if I look at it that way, then I do the, that's my thinking. I don't think I'm right. Well, that's not true. I think I'm right all the time. Anyway, I don't think I'm right. First Thessalonians 5, 21, what's the first scripture? Well, no, it was the third scripture somebody ever asked me to memorize. But my Bible study conductor, the first official, well, the second Bible study conductor, sorry. The Jehovah's Witnesses, when you're in a congregation and you're assigned a Bible study conductor, uh, the second one, Willie. Willie, 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 Willie. Willie was exceptional in that this married man with two children took me on at the age of 16, 17 years old. And I gave Willie a run for his money. But I trusted Willie. Uh, implicitly, Willie was a good friend. I said was a friend because I haven't spoken to Willie since, oh, probably 19, uh, 2002 or something like that. It's been a while. But Willie taught me First Thessalonians 5.21. He made me study that. And that simply says, make sure of all things, hold fast to that which is fine. The King James Version said, make sure of uh, what is, no, it says, no, I forgot how exactly it word. I just know it ends with make sure of that which is true. Ladies and gentlemen, my job is to make sure of everything. That's why I sound so confident. Because I will go and make sure. When I hear stories on the news, and it doesn't sound right. Like, somebody just sent me an email talking about how they're recalling a lot of foods. Uh, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, because they're finding plastic in your foods, people. Because they're plastic anyway. Plastic particles, microplastics, all of that is everywhere. In the environment, in the air. They're polluting our environment with it. We're breathing in plastics, people. We're eating plastics. Now, if you don't understand how devastating it is, just look at the fish who eat plastics and what ends up with them. How we find, you see all those little fish dead, big, huge swarms of fish dead rushing up on the shore? Well, it's the plastic morons. Sorry, I'm talking to the news media because I don't know what the reports are. I don't know what the autopsies have revealed, but that's too many fish to be dying to say that it's just chemicals because look at all the nuclear waste that's going into the oceans on a daily basis from the Naka, uh, uh, Fuki, Fukuyama Center. Okay? I was going to say Nakatomi, but that's uh, the so-called Bruce Willis and his so-called Die Hard. Okay, but anyway, the, I believe it's Fukutoma, whatever, I, I apologize for not remembering the name, but that particular place where they had that nuclear meltdown, which is still melting down, pay attention, that nuclear material is still melting down. The nuclear material breached containment. There is no way to recontain it, people. Once it goes below the surface, once it goes below the foundation of the facility, there is no way to go up underneath the facility and get another containment and capture it. That's why it's called a meltdown. It continues to melt down through the surface of the earth. The theory was that if it melts down all the way to the center of the earth, to the earth's core, there could be a devastating, devastating, devastating effect on this earth. Not so much as an explosion destroying the entire planet. That was a theory in the early uh, what do you call it, nuclear research that the scientists were doing, they found that that may not necessarily be so. But however, nuclear meltdowns, nuclear weapon, nuclear energy, imagine that, that they still don't know. They've had this technology since the 30s, and they still do not know. Almost a 100 years of dealing with it, and they still have not been able to perfect it. Ask yourself the question, why? 
but we didn't come here to talk about that. But you got to ask yourself the question. They keep talking about they created this technology and that technology. And just ask yourself the question, how come we haven't gone anywhere? They talk about the moon and about how they went to the moon. Over 60 years ago, how come nobody's been back to the moon? How come you have companies, uh, countries like China and India sending ships to the moon, but how come nobody's been to the moon? How come they haven't sent any more people to the moon? As I tell you, there are three radiation belts between here and the moon, and one of them is a huge radiation belt. Whereas the direct radiation coming from the sun, that's like standing in front of a microwave with the door open. Okay, inside an enclosed room made out of metal. Okay, pay attention. Inside an enclosed room made out of metal. Because that's what you'll be doing if you were to try to go to the moon. You would be roasted. And they know this. And I promise you they have enough examples of this. I guarantee you. You see, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. They don't need to launch a rocket from the Earth. They have the space shuttle system. They could literally, on the so-called ICE, the International Space Station, ISS, they could literally, pay attention, park a spare space shuttle from China, because China has space shuttles. They could park a space shuttle at the International Space Station, which was started by China, pay attention, and they could send the space shuttle from there to the moon. Pay attention. But why haven't they done that? Because of the radiation. To prove this, notice how every picture you see of the space station, it's always on the dark side of the planet. Pay attention. That's why you can see it at night. That's why you can see the reflection of the sun on the station at night because it needs the earth to block the sun's radiation it uses the earth as a shield so just so that you guys know now i gotta get back to my uh stephanie mills because she's asking what we gonna do with her loving that's what i'm gonna start the next video with so hey we'll see y'all in a moment goodbye <laughs> that was the wrong button. I meant this.